welcome back to the next video of the morning. I'm going to be talking about the very next section called Jesus Restores to Dan. So let's read it. When he arrived at the other side of the region of Gadarenes, going to have fun, fun saying that one, two demon possessed men were coming from the tombs, coming from the tombs, met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. What do you want with us, son of God? They shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Some distance from them, a large herd of pigs was feeding. The demons begged Jesus, If you drive us out, send us into the herd of pigs. He said to them, Go. So they came out and rushed into the pigs, and the whole herd rushed down into the steep bank, into the lake, and died in the water. Those tending the pigs ran off, went into the town, and reported this, including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. Then the whole town went to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they pleaded with him to leave their region. This is a pretty interesting story. But chances are you won't catch it unless you're studying it. This is how, why I'm loving studying in my Bible because I'm catching so much more than what I would actually normally catch. So I have three sticky notes worth of notes right now I want to share with you. First, I want you to notice this part. You might have noticed that I had it underlined in my Bible that says, What do you want with us, Son of God? And that was the demon speaking. The demons acknowledged that Jesus was the Son of God, which is very interesting because I read some statistic yesterday that like 80% of Americans say that they believe in God. But do you think that 80% of those people actually walk with God? No, I don't think that. But 80% of Americans claim to believe in God. Not necessarily just God in general. They believe in God. But this is interesting because these demons... You know, we don't think of demons in a positive way. They were even acknowledging God. They even called him the son of God. And so they know that he is the son of God. They are acknowledging that he is the son of God. Like, they acknowledge that. They know that. And I feel like a lot of Christians are like that, which is very interesting. So this, <clears throat> my little sticky note says, Even demons believe that Jesus existed, but believing is not enough. We must, by faith, accept what Jesus has done for us, receive him as the only savior, and live out your faith by obeying his commands. Because the demons believed in Jesus. They believed that he was the son of God. But they're demons. They weren't angels. Demons were cast out angels from heaven. <clears throat> so accepting that Jesus is the son of God is not enough. We must accept him as our savior and receive what he's done for us, and live out our faith by obeying his commands. And that is what it means to be a Christian, not just believing in God, because too many people are out there just believing in God, and that's it. The next part is <clears throat> these men that Jesus was speaking to were ceremonially unclean in multiple ways. First of all, they were Gentiles. They were not Jewish. So that's already a big no-no in the Jewish culture. Secondly, they were demon-possessed, and it said that they were so violent that no one could even go over by them. You don't want to be around that kind of person that's ceremonially unclean. And then third, they were living in the tombs, which is where the dead people were, and Jews weren't allowed to touch dead people. He, they were ceremonially unclean people, but did that stop Jesus from coming to them and talking to them and healing them? No, and we shouldn't be like that either. We shouldn't avoid people just because, you know, not even necessarily because they're unclean, but just because they're not popular or they're not liked. I was working at a summer camp last week and I made it my goal to try to talk to all of the kids that weren't with anybody else. And I got to talk to a really nice kid who said that nobody ever wanted to sit next to him because he had ADHD. And so I sat next to him on the bus. And that's, like, what God calls us to do. He wants us to reach out to the people that <clears throat> maybe are looked down upon or people don't like them very much. Like, that's what Jesus calls us to do. He calls us to be with the ceremonially unclean people, the people that are kind of social outcasts. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. Okay, finally, the people of the town were upset <clears throat> that Jesus healed those men. And they wanted him gone. Now, this is really, that's kind of weird. That seems kind of backwards, right? Like, why would you want him to leave? It's because it was a pagan city. And 
they had many gods and they didn't like how different Jesus was. He was supernatural and he was, this was a spontaneous kind of thing. They didn't like that. So they wanted him to leave because they didn't like the fact that he was in their city. But then th- something that was interesting <clears throat> was that they were mad that they had driven the pigs into the water which is interesting because two men had just been saved of demon possession and they were more concerned with their pigs what pigs can be replaced like there's probably a bunch of pigs in this area they were more concerned with their pigs than the men that were healed or jesus's awesome miracle power like they're more concerned about their pigs we shouldn't let our possessions like get in the way of us loving people or letting Jesus work in our life. Because if we're too tethered to our possessions, Jesus can't work. There's just not enough room for him to be there. But if you push away those material possessions and you let Jesus take over, there'll be less room for the material possessions to take over. So you want Jesus to be forefront in your mind. You want him to be the most impressive, most important, not impressive, gosh the morning guys and we should love others we shouldn't let our possessions get in the way of us loving other people so if somebody breaks something of ours or destroys it we shouldn't let that get in the way of us loving them just as much because that material possession isn't going to follow us into the afterlife we should be more concerned about is this person going to be in heaven or hell like if we make it to heaven Are we going to see them there? We should be more concerned about that. So that is what I have for you guys today. I think I'm going to make one more video this morning and I would love to have you guys watch. So thank you for being here. God bless you.